Namaste all. I hope you are doing well and you all are safe. I welcome you all on the behalf of Himalayan Yoga Association. My name is Yogi Vivek Rawat and I am your Ashtanga teacher. We are going to be discussing about some terms in Ashtanga, some basic terms, some alignment of the postures. I hope you enjoy this course and you find it fruitful. Namaste. Namaste to all. Welcome to my Ashtanga sessions. I hope you are safe and doing well in your lives. Uh, again, we will today... Uh, we will start today's session with the chanting of Om and the opening mantra of Ashtanga. So again, sit comfortably on the mat so that you are comfortable, you are breathing well. In Sukhasana, close your eyes very gently, keeping your spine straight, keeping your chest open. From here, bring your both palms together. Deep inhale. Om. Vande Gurunam Charinar Vinde Sandar Sita Swatma Sukha Vabode Nisreya se Janglika Yamane Samsara Hala Hala Mohashantye Abahu Purushakaram Sankh Chakra Siddharinam Sastrasir Samsvetam Pranimamim Patanjalim From here, drop your forehead down. Pray to the God. Gather some positive energy. Lift your head up. Rub your palms together. Create a nice energy. Give me your palms. Place your palms on your eyes and your her face, on your throat, on your chest, on your heart. Release your arms down, open your eyes by looking down. So in today's session, let's just discuss about, let's figure out how to perform Janu Sirsasana. So there are three variations of Janu Sirsasana in Astanga primary series. And these Janu Sirsasana, uh, you know, the Janu means in Sanskrit, it is about your knee. So it is about knee twisting. So Janu Sirsasana A, B and C, it keeps on you know challenging your knee joint in a different level. So there are different variations, uh, there are modifications of that if you are not able to perform that, if you are struggling there. So let's have a look here. So after following the half vinyasa, we are going to be in Dandasana, step pose. After here, what we are going to do, so the first variation is a kind of, you know, uh, you'll feel that it is very easy. But the second and third one is a kind of postures, is a kind of set of postures, which is going to challenge you. So just let's have a look from starting. So from Dandasana, bend your right knee, drag your right heel towards your perineum. Rest the knee down, so your knee is facing towards your right side and heel close to your perineum. So as you can see from here, so right foot is almost towards perineum. Knee is facing towards the right side. Right sole is against the left inner thigh, left leg is completely straight. So now from here, as you inhale, lift your arms up and exhale, bend forward. Grab the left foot or place your palms down or grab the strap. Like place a strap if you're not able to reach towards your left foot. And stay here. Keep your chest open. Keep your core active. Look towards your big toes. Do not overarch your cervical, your neck. And stay there. Keep your left leg nicely active. If you feel anything around your knee, you can just squeeze the calf and your hamstring against each other as if you are just kind of you know squeezing something that will protect your knee joint 
after spending five breath here as you inhale chest and chin up look up and as you exhale very gently release your legs forward again after again follow the half vinyasa which is comprised of chaturanga dandasana lower plank upward facing dog and downward facing dog again after half vinyasa step or jump forward same posture with the left side so bend the left knee adjust the left sole of the foot against the right inner thigh and then be there now here this first posture it is like kind of easy as i said because you know almost all the people are able to do it some beginners may not be able to perform it so they can just adjust cushion so in any sitting posture when where uh, you're not you know feeling comfortable where you're rounding your lower back i just suggest you that always adjust something under your hips because your hips will guide, uh, will get that kind of elevation from the ground which will allow your pelvic to tilt very nicely forward because whenever your pelvic uh, pelvic needs an anterior tilt your hips to go back so this is about the forward fold now the second posture is janu sirasana b the very recent b of janu sirasana so after following the half vinyasa again jump or step forward being dandasana from dandasana just bend the right knee adjust the right foot again like as we were doing the first variation the a variation again do the same variation okay now from here what you need to do so you don't have to open your knee to the right side very like completely you can just keep your knee slightly like towards forward towards the front of your area now from here what you need to do you need to lift your hips up so you can like press your palms down okay or like you can place your palms forward and then you can like press your palms down and lift your hips up you can even bend your front knee lift your hips up and then shift your hips over your right foot right so as you can see me again from here from this direction from here you can just lift your hips up press your palms down you can even use the block or something to lift your hips up and very slowly and gently make sure that you're not like feeling anything around your knee so you have to be very careful to get here so lifting the hips up and adjusting the left hip over the right foot so here a knee will come slightly in right and you will point the right toe so i always like i also show you from this direction like this so if i lift my hips up as you can see my right toe what is what it is doing how it is under my hip it is like like this so the sole of the foot is facing towards the ceiling and it is pointed right and then you are going to sit over it now the knee is almost 70 to 80 degree not at 90 degree not fully like open so it is like either 70 to 80 degree or less than that doesn't matter it's okay because if you are not feeling uh, if you are feeling pain if you are feeling comfortable uh, if you are not feeling comfortable in the posture and you're just opening your knee it is not going to give you the benefits of the posture and it is going to just always put you in a level of discomfort okay now from here as you inhale raise your arms up chest open lengthen your spine and exhale bend forward so again knee slightly in left leg is active left foot is slightly flexed in a neutral position and stay there for five breath after spending five breath here as you inhale chest and chin up as you exhale very gently again lift your hip up drag your right foot forward so that you are very slowly and gently placing your hip down and then extend your leg forward now this posture you don't have to perform these and the third variation until and unless you don't get a mastery over the variation a if you are feeling comfortable variation a if your spine is almost straight not getting rounded so much if your pelvic movement is okay if you knee, if you are not feeling something at your knee in variation a then you can move towards the variation b but if you are not comfortable in variation a i suggest you to not move towards the variation b 
because the modification in Ashtanga is like more often uh, the previous variation. There are some modification like adjustment with the block, belt, but if you're not feeling comfortable at one particular variation, do not go ahead towards the second, towards the next one. This is the key. Now again, after following the half vinyasa, perform it with the left foot. So firstly, keeping it like variation A and then place your hip over the foot and then going down, keeping your right leg active. And again, you can squeeze your calf and hamstring slightly against each other so that you're protecting your knee joint. Now again, you can spend five breath there and then you can just come out after spending five breath and then you can follow the half vinyasa again. After following the half vinyasa, you can land into um, Dandasana. Now this third variation is the challenging variation among all these three. This I will not suggest you if you are a beginner, even for some intermediate practitioner, it is not suggested. It can be only suggested to those people who have, you know, a good range of motion around the hip joint. So it can come like a lot of after a lot of practice or maybe you are already flexible. You don't uh, have that kind of life where, you know, you always keep on sitting or like, uh, not, do not like rotate your hips out in some movements. Your hips are like getting stiff. Do not go to, do not try this, you know, third variation. You can just try the first or second variation and then you can move ahead to the upcoming postures. So how it is, is we are going to have a look. So you can just have a look. It's okay. Now from here, after landing in Dandasana, Bend the right knee again, knee towards your right side. Now this time, you're going to lift the heel up, toe down. So with, without any external force, just try to lift your right heel up and right toe down. Now from here, insert your right arm under your shin, right? This is my right arm. And under your shin, just try to grab your right foot and try to lift it up and try to bring it closer to your perineum. If you're not feeling comfortable at any point, stop there. Otherwise, just drag it towards your perineum. From here again, try to lift your hips up. This thing which I'm gonna do here, only do that if you're feeling comfortable, if you have good range of motion at the hip joint. Otherwise, don't do this. So lift the hip up and try to slowly, very slightly adjust your body forward. So as you can see, it is giving an intense an intense twist around my knee joint. If my hip is not properly open, it is going to be very harmful for my knee. So inhale, raise my raise your arms up. So as you can see, my right heel is almost towards the ceiling, if not completely, but very slightly. And my right toe is down. So I'm lifting my heel up. It is a very intensive twisting. Inhale, arms up and exhale, bend forward. And stay there for five breaths. After spending five breaths here, inhale, chest and chin up. Exhale, release your arms. Very gently release your legs. The modification is, again, firstly, you can adjust a block or a cushion or double cushion or any bolster under your hips, right? And then you can perform the posture. The second modification is, if you are feeling pain around your knee joint, a very little pain, uh, if you need a support, then you can just adjust a block here like this. So block is giving support to my knee joint. But again, I'm suggesting you, if you're not feeling comfortable at variation A and B, if you don't have a good range of motion, good openness at the hip joint, do not try this. Prepare yourself for this, but do not try this. If you are trying this, just you have to be very, very aware. You have to be very, very careful of your efforts. All right. Now, again, if you're not reaching forward, just use a strap or a towel and like this. Again, after following the half vinyasa, again, land forward and change the side. This time with the left side. And again, firstly, 
Firstly, try to use your own muscles without any external force, without any hand adjustment. Try to lift your heel up as much as you can do, as much you can rotate your hip out. And then from there on, very, very little support of your hand, still your hip muscles, leg muscles are doing the work, but you're just getting a little support of your hand. And then you can just stay there for five breaths. And then after spending five breaths, again come up, follow the half vinyasa, then we finish these all three variations of Janu Sesa Asana. So it is not important to get any kind of external force or even your like hands adjustment like to pull something that will not provide you that much flexibility. Uh, if you do it very actively without any kind of external help, external force, then it is going to be beneficial for you. You will gain the flexibility soon instead of, you know, pulling something and then thinking that I'm going to be flexible because I'm just doing it very deeply. That is a wrong way to do. So this thing, just keep it in your mind. So I hope that you have uh, got the information, the proper alignment cues here of these three postures. So, just let's close this session with the chanting of Om and the closing mantra. So, just sit comfortably, keep your spine straight, close your eyes, turn your palms together, inhale deeply. Om. Swaste prajabhyay paripalayantam nyayena margena mahim mahim sa go brahmane bhyay shubhmastu nityam loka samasta sukhino bhavantu drop your forehead down, give thanks to the God, be thankful, lift your head up and release your arms by looking down gently, open your eyes. So I hope you received all the information regarding these postures, these two postures in this particular session. We shall be discussing about few more interesting postures in the upcoming video, in the upcoming sessions. So until then, goodbye, take care.